gosh, is he all right? Christopher Reeve, his portrayal of the Man of Steel has been, of course, stealing the hearts of America for a trilogy of Superman man movies. And this week, uh, he goes back on stage for a production of Holiday at the Williamstown Playhouse in Massachusetts. And this morning, he is joining us, therefore, from our ABC News Bureau in Boston. Chris, good morning. How are you? Good morning, John. I'm fine. Hi. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know that Christopher Reeve was not the lead in the play. Uh, I was surprised to see that. Are you by the school of thought that there are no small roles no no small actors only small roles I don't even qualify as a small actor I'm 64 but I get I get <laughs> I get the drift no see see a place like Williamstown is where you can go to do the kind of work that you don't get to do the rest of the year I mean on Broadway I sort of have to be above the title and carry the play and there's all these great parts that go unplayed because your sort of uh, career position says you should should do something else but holiday is a fabulous play and Ned which is the sort of second male lead is a real juicy role that I, I probably couldn't do in New York who are the other actors? Ah, great yeah. list. We've got Ken Howard, who you know from 1776 and The White Shadow and uh, Adam's Rib and all these other plays. Uh, Blythe Danner, who uh, has been described as probably the most underrated actress in this country, which is certainly true. And Marisa Berenson, Jerome Dempsey. Uh, that's just the opening play. Last year, Richard Dreyfuss was there and Frank Langella. You know, people think of summer stock or summer schlock, but this, this is a theater <laughs> festival, you know? Just a few little names for yeah. summer stock. Right. Well, of course, look, Superman was a gigantic role. That's the understatement of the year. Yeah. And yet, I am told, you have hung up your cape for good. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, I'm sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> Why? See, Why that watch, decision? Well, did you watch that film clip? That kid yeah. looked real heavy, you know? I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh, getting too on. old. I can't pick up children anymore. <laughs> uh, I think that I believe in a certain... Uh, honestly in a certain kind of integrity of the material that as things get spun out into too many episodes the quality in inevitably is going to go down and i think that we've done three very diverse uh, uh original films and uh, we should sort of quit while we're ahead rather than flog it to death you know mm -hmm. and uh the thing is this news has come out as though i'm quitting now which sounds slightly ungrateful whereas this superman part made my career. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be having these movies like Death Trap and the things I'm about to do wouldn't be possible without Superman. But my decision to, 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 uh, to leave Superman also was made in connection with the producers, with Richard Lester, with the writers. And we felt back in 1981, after we finished Superman 2, two this is a two-year-old news, that with Superman 3, we'd finish it. So it's untrue that I read one critic said somewhere. It was only after he read his reviews of Superman 3 that he made that decision because the reviews quite honestly Listen, weren't as good as the first two. Well, that's not true. If I may just say, I mean this is something like I'm blowing my own horn here, some reviews for the film, people didn't like the way the style of the film had gone. Most, most, most of my reviews sounded like I called the people up on the phone and asked them to take dictation. That's um, true. So I did fine. No one said Chris Reeve can't cut it or it looks like a turkey, you know? You know, it, it seems like <laughs> always your reviews are terrific, but some of the movies that you've chosen really don't seem to live up to your performance in them, like, like Monsignor. I mean, it came out with all this big publicity, everyone yeah. expected great things. What happened? Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know? And, uh, <laughs> as long as you can say that when you get up and go to work. No, seriously, Monsignor, I, I, uh, Monsignor made me as angry as it did much of the American public because it makes statement about a Catholic priest. And I believe in fair play in my life and in my work, and I think that a movie that's going to make allegations about a priest and then doesn't go and prove it, that doesn't build its case, is really reprehensible. And uh, uh, it, that's, that's really what's too bad. I don't care the fact that it was a flop and didn't make money for 20th Century Fox. That doesn't bother me. It said it wasn't fair, you know? But that happened in the cutting, not in the original yeah. there script was, that you saw. There's a good movie and they're trying to get out, you know? Uh, they, they just used some of the wrong bits. They didn't tell the story properly, in my view. What does that do to you as an actor? Does that make you more cautious as to roles that you're going to take or perhaps control that you can have? <laughs> Once you've hit your, hit your head against a wall, you, you learn to dig a tunnel, don't you? Uh, no, the thing to do is, is be more careful about what the intentions are of the people you're working with. Like, are, are we all doing the same thing here? Do we all see this the same way? So I think that what you have to do is curb that initial 
rush of enthusiasm and think, am I making this with the right people? Do we all yeah. have the same motives? And then, and then go to work. And have trust in them. Chris, thanks, and it's nice seeing you again. Good luck up there at the Williamstown Playhouse for we holiday. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment.